Live from the Hilton at Bonnet Creek, Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering Vision 2015. Brought to you by IBM. And now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to IBM Vision, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. This is theCUBE. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. Alan Chapman is here. He's the Director of Sales Performance Management at IBM. Alan, welcome to theCUBE. Great, thanks. Great to be here. So, sales performance management. I thought it was low base, high commission. Is it more complicated than that? <laughs> Only a touch. Only a touch. I mean, you've got the basic concept, so you're, on the, you're in the right area, that's for sure. So, uh, IBM has been making moves in the space. Uh, acquisition of Vericent in 2012, complemented um, what started all, we're talking off camera, Cognos, which is where you came to IBM that's right. from, and then all kinds of other assets in the, in the governance, risk, compliance, you know, the whole business intelligence space, and now sales performance management. So yep. tell us the story. Well, I mean, the great connection point here is, um, the vision is that the, uh, the, the capabilities that's locked inside the data, inside the solution like ICM, you know, when you put that alongside all the analytics platforms that we've invested heavily in, you know, it's a great solution to bring that together, release, release what's there. And now we've got Watson Analytics on top of that. You know, we're seeing some great results from customers who can actually dive into their sales compensation and understand whether their compensation plans are really doing what they should be doing. You know, is that low base, high leverage, the right thing, you know, in every case. So that's, they're, they're the questions we're helping clients answer through this. Yeah, so a couple of things there. One is, you know, the, the industry generally has been a sort of rear view mirror looking industry. Yeah. You, so folks talked about that in the general sessions. Watson Analytics brings a predictive nature to the business. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I can. So you're right, you know, for a long time, you know, customers have, are on this evolution, this curve of, you know, getting the basics in place with ICM, really laying down a process and understanding. And now they've, now, you know, many of our customers have, have got there, you know, they've implemented the ICM solution, so now they get to, to look forward. And, uh, and Watson allows them to, to not just do sort of drill down and slice and dice in the way we used to do with analytics, but actually to spot patterns, to spot things that are happening that you wouldn't ask the questions about in the first place. It's very powerful, very powerful tool. So how do, to, to take us through how a client might utilize that. I mean, so can they be proactive? Can they you know, make offers? Can they adjust sort of territories? How in practical terms would somebody put that to use? Yeah, exactly those things. So for example, if you had a sales manager who's in ICM, um, he's got his set of data for, for compensation that he wants to do some analysis of. He clicks a button, it takes him into Watson, Watson comes up and presents some options as to how he, how he can look at the data. From there he can, he can move around, it will present him with patterns that he can you know, spot what's actually happening and, and make some insights into the data that he didn't think to look for. He can then you know, feed that back into his compensation plan design so he can adjust some of his rates, he can change some of his territories, whatever those insights were. And it's, it's part of the beauty of analytics and it always has been, right? You're going to discover things that you didn't know were there. And uh, we're taking that a level further now. So how should people think about this sort of life cycle? I remember you know, back in the day it was, all right, we're going to put, put salespeople in every NFL city in the United States. <laughs> okay, that's, our, that's the degree to which we're going to analyze this, the total available market. How would you go about sort of sizing the opportunity in today's world? So in the opportunity from a from a, from a TAM standpoint. So one of the challenges that a you know, sales organization has is where should I put my salespeople? How yeah, yeah. big is the market? How do I analyze that? Um, yeah, and, uh, and again, through looking at that data, we're able to absolutely solve that, to help them solve that problem. But of course, it's, it's much more complex than just direct sales teams these days, right? Some of the clients that we're working with have massive distribution structures. You know, if you look at the insurance industry, they've got, you know, multi-country implementations, they've got, um, you know, t internal sellers, external sellers, distribution that's, that, that's very complex. And so the first thing is to help them solve all those problems and get that process in place, lay the technology down that helps them do that. And we've got a new offering there as well, uh, specifically in insurance, which is producer and life cycle credential management. It's a, it's, a, it's a complex space to make sure that people are getting paid what they should be getting paid and making sure that you're not paying the wrong people. Otherwise you get fined from the regulators, lots of complexity around that. That's so. a great example, insurance, because you've got agents, you've got these producers, you, yep. you don't really know, you know where, they're, where they're coming from, you've got you know, channel conflicts. So how does IBM help you know, resolve all that? I mean, obviously through technology, but maybe you can maybe double click on that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the technology that we've got um, allows, allows the, uh, the insurance companies to actually 
lay out their distribution models in this tool. It allows them to handle onboarding, all the complications that happen around the certifications, the training that those partners have to have, you know, getting the onboarding kits. All those things are handled by this software, which ultimately feeds and connects back to our, our core incentive comp program, which then says, yes, you can pay this person, you know, or not, or whatever the other details are. You know, and it handles all the complexities in the US, for example, of the differences state by state, um, you know, allowing a, a much simpler view of the actual insurance company around, uh, around how, they, how they handle its distribution. Now, you, uh, we were joking earlier about the you know, low base, high, high commission. You, you implied it's not always the, the best situation. So what can you share with us in terms of learnings from you know, the client base broadly, you know, where, for example, that might not be the best situation? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's fascinating. It's, uh, w when we work with clients and they start to really get some insights in this data, they've, you know, they've had a, a lot of companies have had compensation plans in place for a long period of time, and they've made a, a lot of assumptions about how they work and how they operate. And what they're starting to spot is that you know, those assumptions aren't always true. You know, they, they actually see that uh, some of the caps maybe that they put in place you know, aren't, aren't giving them the behavior they expect. So you know, making some small tweaks to those things uh, can really make a difference. If you take that down to the level of a, of a seller, you know, having access to some of the tools that we're putting out there today. So we've got a new mobile solution uh, that's going to be out later this year around, um, that, that's going to give the sellers direct access. You know, this is a tool that they can pull up, look at, see how their compensation plan's going, and you know, that will influence their behavior, their decision as they walk into that next meeting. Um, so you know, both, it plays on both ends of the spectrum. So are there examples where the assumptions are just completely wrong that you could share once they got behind the data, or is it more kind of validating things that you think and then it's really small tweaks that it do, is what most of the management is actually accomplishing? It's, it's both, actually. So we're seeing some customers who, you know, for some small tweaks in, in, uh, you know, in the way that they lay down, like I say, the caps or the specific rates that they want to uh, look at, but also the territories that they align to. So, you know, how have we, how have we got... Uh, uh, you know, a specific territory shaped. We've got an experienced seller here. Is it experience that always makes the difference? Is it a combination of factors? Is it experience um, and the territory that we put them in and this, the size of the market opportunity that's there? So all these correlations, you know, we, we're good at looking like at one factor up until now, but some of the new predictive stuff allows us to tie all those together and look at multiple factors to make these decisions, and it lets them make those, make those calls. But it's not software development. They can't just keep going out and tweaking, 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 right? There's got to be a human element, and you've got to deal with customer relationships, and, and it's got to be a little bit more of a slow roll, I would imagine, with some of these, these tweaks. Or is yeah. it more around the comp and more about the, the way that that is designed to drive behavior? Again, both things. So, you know, one of the things that we know when we look at our, our most successful customers is, that they, they understand the human aspect of the selling source. It's not just about a process, it's not just about compensation plans. You know, it's all about how they interact with the, the, their sellers and their sellers interact with their clients, right? So they, get, they absolutely get that. And so they can bring those changes in, in an appropriate speed. Some, some customers though, do this very quickly. They, you know, they, they, they make changes to their plans much more frequently. Their sales team are used to doing this. I just met with one customer this morning who was talking about the fact that their, their key focus is cross-selling, and so they adjust rates uh, on a very frequent basis to encourage that cross-selling behavior uh, within, their, uh, within their teams. Alan, what's the relationship between the sort of classical CRM and the sales performance management piece that you're involved in? Can you talk about those sort of dots? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the classical CRM is a you know, is a core way of getting, of collecting that basic information and, and uh, allowing, the, allowing the sales guys to, you know, capture where they're after, have details about their, their customers and insights. Uh, and there's a, there's, a, there's a level of um, additional value that then gets added on from both incentive compensation management, but also other areas of the sales performance management umbrella. So sales performance management being a, a sort of broader term that encompasses, um, you know, both uh, helping them forecast more accurately, ultimately helping drive the top line revenue growth. So, um, one of the challenges that I've seen organizations, in particular you see this with, with certain public companies, um, that they, they face, they're growing and they need to uh, adjust the sales force, you know, the territories, yeah. periodically. Yeah. You don't want to do it every, certainly every quarter, you don't want to do it every year if you don't have to. That's but right. you know, every couple of years you got to shuffle the, the deck. And what will happen is, Invariably, in the fourth quarter, they'll let people know, hey, in Q1, we're going to you know, change things. And so the sales force will go like crazy to try to close as much business as possible in Q4, and then Q1 becomes <laughs> this exercise and sort of readjusting things. 
and they'll look back and they'll say, well, they'll use that as an excuse. This is what happened. We missed the quarter because. Yeah. Uh, can you help with that problem? You know, I, I, I think we can. The, uh, the, so that is certainly an issue that uh, a lot of our customers face, you know, and, and they know that whenever they change territories in a significant way, um, it's going to take a hit. The, 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 the advanced analysis and the predictive capabilities, you know, of looking at how you've got your territories aligned and making smaller changes to that as you go through, um, you know, without the big revolution that some co companies go through, and, yeah, and, and they can easily lose a quarter when they go through that revolution, can really help you kind of get ahead of that and, uh, and help give more continuity to the sales teams. So it's not just a, you know, we're going to reorganize for the sake of reorganizing, but you've got a lot more targeted data about how you want to make those changes and, and, uh, and adjustments to it. So I see two things there. One is the potential to stage that transition, and the yep. other is to communicate so the impact of that transition. Yeah. And you can help with the latter, I think, is, is what I'm um, inferring. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can. So you can understand that, you know, again, feeding that predictive data in the data around compensation management through to this, you know, you've got the possibility of understanding what that kind of churn is going to be if you, are, if you apply that within, those, uh, within, you, within your organization. What are some of the more gnarly problems that customers come to you with that IBM has helped them solve? Oh, you know, it's, it, it, Often, especially for large enterprises, you know, they have had maybe legacy systems for a long period of time, and actually they've they've forgotten how they how they you know the core of their requirements, how they pay people, and so you know it's we, tribal knowledge. It now, is, right? it is, it is. So you know, we really do. I mean, putting this kind of system in place really helps people move from this phase of chaos, and that could be chaos around you know, the, uh, they, they use Excel and the, you know, it's all hand-driven uh, work or it's you know, chaos around legacy systems uh, and really helping us get them over that curve to a point where they've got the basic level of stability uh, and they can really kind of then start to build on that with you know, clarity of process. The sellers trust the data they're seeing, the way they're doing inquiries into it is, is very clean and, the, and again, the, the feedback to the sellers is, is quick and easy which means that the, the sellers are more motivated to sell and then they move into that final phase of, you know, how do we optimize? So, and this is where a lot of our clients are now, you know, the ones who have implemented ICM and now pushing us to say, this is the predictive piece. How do, we, how do we help us actually maximize the top line, you know, as well as control this process? So you've done a great job helping us control the process. You know, what's next for us? And our clients are taking us there. How important is visualization in this whole space? And what is IBM doing there? Oh, it's, it, it's incredibly essential. You know, we, we tell stories through, um, through something like Watson Analytics, and, we, and it allows us to build up, you know, a, um, a, a clarity of explanation for what's actually happening in the business. Show the insight, and then show the action you're going to take. This stuff has always got to be tied back to an action that you're going to take somewhere in the business. Whether again, it's about your compensation, your territory layout, whatever that is. But the visualization and the way of telling that story is really important. And the the, the visualization of something like Watson and the way it can help you really see the connection points and the patterns in the data you know, really brings that home in a much more visceral way. And Watson's kind of like your secret, new secret weapon, shiny new toy, but it's also a secret weapon that nobody else has at this moment. So, uh, last question. Take us through, Alan, the vision that you have for sort of near to mid and even long term for your organization. Yeah, uh, it's a great question. So, um, the, the world of uh, sales compensation, sales performance management is getting more complex for our users. You know, they, they are seeing a lot, a lot stronger regulatory requirements. You know, the economies are improving. We're seeing a return to growth. That has certain implications for them. Um, and just the requirements around efficiency and effectiveness. So our first job is to help them be able to respond to that, make their life simpler, help them be more agile. We've got incredibly powerful, inf incredibly flexible solutions. So, you know, overlaying simplicity across the top of that so we can help them. That's our, that's our short-term goal. And, and just exposing more of the data to analy analytics is, is kind of where we want to be. And then as we move forward, you know, the sales performance management space is again hel about helping them grow the top line. So how can we really help adjust that? We've got the efficiency and the effectiveness. How do we help grow the top line? It's through Watson, it's through some other exciting things we're going to be looking at in this space to really accelerate those things over the next couple of years. Nothing happens until a sale is made. IBM can help you figure out what's happening after the sale is made. Alan Chapman, thanks very it's much for coming on the cube. The <laughs> it's really a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Jeff Frick and I will be right back after this message. This is IBM Vision, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back.